good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Tonight, I have your Monday Night Raw review as of June 22nd, 2020. Coming into the show, I, I was a little bit late getting to the show. I think I started watching around 7.20, so I did miss the opener with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, but I did catch up on that, so I will be letting you guys know what happened. But you guys know how the reviews work. We're going to run through the entire show, breaking down everything that happened and giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions on everything we got here tonight on Monday Night Raw. I'm going to break down segment by segment, match by match, match exactly what took place at Monday Night Raw and give you everything I thought about it and we're going to decide if the show was shitty, great, or somewhere in between. So with that being said guys, let's dive into Monday Night Raw and see what the hell took place. So we opened up the show with the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre and out comes my man Dolph Ziggler. You guys know I'm a big Dolph Ziggler fan so I was excited for this. You guys know he got traded over to Monday Night Raw. Him and Bobby Roode were traded over to Raw for AJ Styles going over to SmackDown. So out comes Ziggler. You guys know these guys were a tag team for a little while they were running around doing heel antics and attacking Roman Reigns and they had different feuds here and there. Were Raw Tag Team Champions at one point. So Dolph Ziggler comes out and he congratulates McIntyre on becoming champion and he talks about how you know uh, if, if anybody should be champion it should be him. But he says that Drew McIntyre owes him something and you know Drew's like what the hell do I owe you? And he says a WWE Championship match. So Ziggler just walks out, practically asks him for a WWE Championship opportunity and Drew McIntyre confirms it. He just says okay yeah. And we have a WWE title match taking place at Extreme Rules between Ziggler and McIntyre. I guess trying to prolong you know, Drew McIntyre's reign until we get to SummerSlam with the big time feud that he's going to have. So this is kind of cruddy because you know Dolph Ziggler is going to get defeated here. He is not going to become WWE Champion as, as amazing as that would be for me. I would love to see it. That is not going to happen first of all. Second of all, I do not like that he can just come out and get a championship match man. I'd like to see some number one contenderships. I'd like to see a Fatal 4-Way or something like that take place in order order to crown a number one contender. I can't remember the last time we saw Ziggler on our TVs in a competitive match, winning match after match after match. Actually, I don't think that's ever happened. So for him to come out and ask for this opportunity, just, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just not, it's not good. It's not creative. It is, it is lazy booking. But that is it. That is the opener here. No creativity. Dolph Ziggler does get a WWE Championship match, which I am excited to watch. I think these guys will put on a great match, and I low-key want Ziggler to win, even though I love McIntyre as WWE Champion, but this was not a creative way to get to this matchup. But nonetheless, this is how Monday Night Raw started. And it's not like the interaction was bad. It's just, I, I don't know, lazy. The next segment, Nia Jax comes out to the ring and she's pretty much hijacking the show. She sits in a steel chair in the middle of the ring and she talks about hijacking the show and she talks about the Raw Women's Championship with Asuka and everything. Out of nowhere, this was kind of crazy and this is actually where I walked in, R-Truth, the 24-7 champion comes down, which I am glad somebody actually entertaining and somebody that, you know, gets me pumped up about wrestling came out during this segment to cut off Nia Jax, but R-Truth comes out and he runs through Akira Tozawa talking about the ninjas and he talks about how he has a match with Akira Tozawa later on tonight, and I didn't understand why he cut her off. I mean, I'm kind of glad he did, but uh, he would come out, and then he pretty much just leaves, which I thought was really, really weird, but that's what took place. So Nia Jax gets back on the mic, and she says she's not leaving. Well, about that time, out come everyone's favorite, the Queen Charlotte Flair. Out comes Charlotte Flair, and they pretty much just cut each other down, talk trash to each other, and they beat the hell out of each other. They get into a big old brawl, and Charlotte actually hurts her shoulder and arm area. I think it was her shoulder or upper arm or something like that. She does get that injured fighting with Nia during this brawl. Next up, we cut backstage to the a promo with the Street Profits and recap the BS competition with the everything you can do, I can do better stuff with Viking Raiders and all that, and they talk about their title match later on. So when we come back from commercial, there it is. We have the Raw Tag Team Championship match. The championship match that we should have gotten way long ago. This is a good TV match, man. I know we don't have any of their figures yet, but this was a good TV match. Good back and forth, great athleticism, great TV stuff. We need more matches like this on TV and not putt-putt golf and bullshit. After the matchup, though, I found this very interesting. Out comes Angel Garza and Andrade and Zelina Vega, and they take out the Street Profits. So I guess Angel Garza and Andrade have put their differences aside. They have worked together like we saw last week where Zelina Vega was like, bro, we gotta cut out this bull crap. We gotta start working together. They start working together, and they attack the Profits from behind, and I guess we are getting a tag team feud between Andrade and Garza teaming up to take on the Street Profits. 
After that, we cut backstage and we have Rollins, Murphy, and Theory. Rollins is pretty much just staring off into space. Theory and Murphy are super confused. They're trying to talk to him about something, but he is just staring off into space and we cut to commercial. So we come back from commercial and Rollins cuts a promo on Ray and Dominic. Same thing we've heard for weeks pretty much. You know, he, he talks about the sacrifice and the example and everything like that with Ray and Dom and, and pretty much just the same Monday Night Messiah promo that we've been getting about Ray Mysterio from Seth Rollins. I am hyped for their eventual matchup but uh, I am sick of hearing the same exact promo over and over and over again. Cut backstage to an interview with Charlotte and she talks about her shoulder and uh, they're putting over the shoulder pretty hard here so I'm guessing that is going to be the storyline moving forward with Charlotte. They're making a key factor and they're, you know, they're focusing in on the shoulder so I know this is going to play a story in the in the championship match that we're going to get later tonight for the Raw Women's Championship between Asuka and Charlotte. We would eventually find out what would happen here. After Charlotte's interview, we will get an interview with Garza, Andrade, and Zelina Vega, and pretty much exactly what we thought seeing them attack the Street Profits. Differences are aside, and the Raw tag titles are in their sights, made clear here by all three in this interview with Garza, Andrade, and Vega. Next up is the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka and Charlotte going one-on-one -on -one here. We've seen great matches between these two so many times before, but this one was not too crazy, you know? It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't, you know, in-depth and great like we've had in the past. I know it's not a big-time pay-per-view, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more out of these two. Physical match, but nothing too crazy. It was a kind of quick one compared to their other matches, and Asuka tapped Charlotte out. She taps out Charlotte to the Asuka lock. That was pretty surprising to me. I know she does have the shoulder and the arm injury, which is obviously what they're going for here. It's an outing for Asuka. You can't beat me because my freaking arm was hurt, you know? That's the only reason you beat me. That's the whole downplay that they're going here for Charlotte. That's the obvious angle that they're taking, but uh, I can't believe they did this, man. I cannot believe that they had the queen tap out here to Asuka. I thought that was pretty interesting. After the match, we would cut to a backstage interview with Nia, and at this point, it seemed like we were going to be getting a triple threat between Nia, Charlotte, and Asuka taking place at Extreme Rules, but with the injury to Charlotte's arm or the kayfabe injury, we may be taking a different approach, which we'll see later on in this show. Next up, we have highlights of the Orton and Edge feud, a medical update with Edge, and he, we cut backstage. He's clearly at the Performance Center, but they made it out like his house, so I guess he has a whole freaking like ring and setup and Performance Center at his house, because he's sitting in a ring in the corner, in, at, you know, on the turnbuckle, but he's like sitting down in the corner of a turnbuckle talking here, and this promo that Edge cuts was so fantastic, man. Holy crap. Christ. It was so good. I don't even know exactly what he said. That's how good it was. I have a few lines here, but you got to go find this promo. They may not have the full thing up on the YouTube channel for WWE because it was kind of edgy. It was edgy. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But seriously, it was sick as hell. Like this was the this was the best promo I've ever heard Edge cut. So if you want to see a damn good football promo, you go check this one out, man. This one had me invested. I I know that we're gonna get another match out of these guys, and I want to see it. They had me invested in anything. They could have anything. I don't care what they do. They could go play putt-putt golf like the Viking Raiders and Street Profits, and I'd be invested in that ish, because this shit right here had me going. But anyways, I have a note here that says we need more talent like this. We gotta get away from scripted promos, and that's completely the case here, man. When you listen to this promo, this was not scripted. This is all Edge from the mind of Edge, from Adam Copeland, from his brain, writing into this promo. This was a genius level promo, bro. Like, it, it was that good. You definitely gotta go check it out, but this line right here is freaking just... This this is, this is mic drop right here. He's, he says he, at this point he doesn't even care about winning and he says he's going to make Randy wish that Cowboy Bob was firing blanks the night he was conceived. Holy Christ, what a line this was. This was the best part of Monday Night Raw for me. So entertaining. This has been the best part of Raw for weeks upon weeks. Anything with Randy Orton and Edge has just been on fire because it feels real, doesn't it? I mean, the, there's no script here. These guys are doing what they want to do. I guess because they're older talents, they're, they're grandfather, they're end if you will. And this is just good work, man. I, I don't know. You got to look this up. You got to go check out this promo. Edge freaking killed it. One of the greats. One of my favorites of all time. Both of these men are so damn good, man. Woo! I'm ready for another football game between these two. We cut backstage and Nia Jax jumped Charlotte during an interview and beats the hell out of her arm. So I guess we're riding Charlotte off TV. I bet we're going to get Charlotte missing Extreme Rules and then coming back for SummerSlam. I'm going to go ahead and make that proposition for you right there, Brad. That's what's going to take place. Charlotte will be unable to compete. Pete, she will miss Extreme Rules, B-level pay-per-view, and make her queen-like return at SummerSlam to capture the championship in some, for some, some form or fashion right there. That's what I guess. 
Next up, we have a matchup between Akira Tozawa and R-Truth. Now, this one made no sense to me because it seemed like on commentary they were talking about how the 24-7 championship was not going to be on the line in the matchup itself. So once the bell rang, the mat, uh, the title wouldn't be on the line. Or so I don't know. It made no sense the way they were explaining it or maybe I just heard it wrong. But before this matchup even starts, we got all the ninjas out there. We got Akira Tozawa out there. We got the 24-7 champion out there. Out come Bobby Lashley and MVP. They come out taking out all the ninjas, beating the hell out of the ninjas. Bobby comes out and full Nelson's R-Truth out of nowhere. R-Truth is passed out. During the chaos of all this happening, Akira Tozawa actually snuck up under the ring, and when Truth is passed out due to the full Nelson, Tozawa crawls back from under the ring to a passed out R-Truth, pins R-Truth, and wins the 24-7 championship. I mean, I don't even know what to say, man. R-Truth should just be the 24-7 champion 24-7 anyways. Like, he should be the champion forever uh, of all time. Just don't just don't take the title off. And this was, I think this was just for shock and value, just to get the championship and just have a big old moment on Raw, you know, just like, oh wow, look what happened on Raw. So, I'm not invested in this. I like Akira Tozawa a lot. I don't like what they got him doing with the ninja stuff. It makes no sense. R-Truth not having the 24-7 championship does not sit right with me. You know, I'm not big on the 24-7 title. The hardcore title was much better, much more entertaining. But R-Truth is golden. He is golden and, you know, whatever gets him on our TVs I am in full support of. So, I would like to see him, uh, I'm, I'm ready for him to take the title back. I mean, I guess that's all I can really say. We then cut to a backstage interview interview with Natalia, and she pretty much says that uh, she needs to leave the locker room now since Becky and Charlotte are out, and she has an announcement, and it really didn't make any sense because she didn't even make an announcement because after that, we would cut to the ring where she would take on Liv Morgan, and during the matchup, or before the matchup, Natalia brings Lana out. So you remember last week when we had Natalia and Lana backstage talking to each other and kind of, uh, I don't know, bridging, creating like a friendship or a bond in the backstage area? I guess that's what we get. Natalia destroys Liv Morgan. And Liv Morgan got one offensive move in in this entire match. Natalia basically buried Liv Morgan, and she uh, she beats her. She beats her. She didn't make an announcement. She just basically went to the ring, destroyed Liv Morgan in a in a three second match, and that was pretty much it. So I guess Lana and Natalia are together for some reason, and Liv Morgan takes another step down the totem pole that she did not need. We cut backstage to Big Show in an interview and he talks about ninjas. It was very weird. He like was super like laid back and chilling. He was like my Netflix show and humor in WWE and making stupid corny jokes and then he got really serious talking about Edge and Randy Orton and was like I'm gonna kill Randy Orton. Kind of like he literally went from oh my god man this is great I'm gonna murder Randy Orton. That's how quick he turned face heel face just like that in the interview. It was kind of weird. I, I don't know. But anyways we cut back to the ring and out comes Ric Flair. He hypes up Randy Orton and he talks about how he's the best of all time. He's the best performer. He's the best that. Blah, blah, blah. Out comes the Viper Randy Orton and I'm the biggest Randy Orton fan you'll find. So, I mean, you know, he is pretty damn good. I love Randy Orton. I think he's fan freaking fantastic. Been watching him in his entire career. Promo, you know, talking about Edge and destroying him and being a legend killer and how he's going to continue to legend kill. And I love the gimmick. I freaking, I always love the legend killer gimmick. I thought it was freaking genius. I thought when he returned after that shoulder injury, I think it was like back in 2017 or 16. I want to say it was 17. He should have returned and became the rookie killer. He should have been taking out rookie talents and beating up on the younger talents. I thought that would have been a freaking fantastic gimmick to give him. But he's cutting his promo and he's talking about this and that and talking about Edge again and then, well, well it's the big show that can't fit in a freaking camera. So out comes the big show. Big show is standing up for Edge and Christian and they're cutting great pr promos back and forth. I thought the promo exchange between all these men was great. All three of them did a fantastic job in the segment. However, I'm not invested in them in a match. I do not want to see Big Show versus Randy Orton in a matchup in 2020. It's just not something I want to see. I do recall, I think, seven years ago or so at, like, Extreme Rules 2013. Didn't we get a match or a few between these guys before? And I know you could say the same thing. Well, we've seen Randy Orton and John Cena a million times, and Randy Orton versus Batista, and we've seen Randy Orton versus Edge, but I don't know, man. It's just not the same. I, I'm just not invested in this at this moment. I know Big Show is still in great shape and everything like that, I and I, they did a great job hyping up this feud and getting me to want to see it, 
but I just don't want to see it. I don't want to see this feud or matchup take place, but these dudes did do a really good job in this segment. Next up is the women's tag team title match between the Iconics taking on Bayley and Sasha. I feel like I've seen this a million times because I have. Bayley and Sasha retain again, so I do not expect the Iconics to be in the title picture anytime soon, man. Get them away from the tag titles immediately. They've been here so many times. So after the match, Sasha gets on the mic and she tells Bayley, you know, I'm jealous of you having two titles, basically. She says, you're my best friend. I love you, but I'm getting sick of only having one championship. So it kind of is like, oh shit. She actually requests, she says, Bayley, I want a women's title match. And we're like, oh snap, Brad, are we finally going to get this? No. She actually says, Sasha challenges Asuka to a Raw Women's Championship match at Extreme Rules and laughs it out. And out comes the Raw Women's Champion. Asuka comes out to the ring and all of them pretty much brawl together. And this doesn't really make sense from a certain standpoint because, you know, Sasha Banks is a SmackDown superstar. And I don't think you can just cross brand, take, you know, go after the championship. I'm not exactly against them having a match. I just think there's a logic gap in that. Even though she is the Women's Tag Team Champion, so I guess she can mesh between all the shows. But that's only as Women's Tag Team Champion, right? Not, not a main championship? I don't know, man. I don't make the football rules. I just explain to you how I see it from my perspective here. And while this matchup will be good if we officially get it, I don't know how I feel about this just being a request here out of nowhere after we've had so many things revolving around the Raw Women's Championship. I don't know. Anything's better than Charlotte or Nia. But we could have seen Io Shirai or somebody else possibly. I don't know, bro. I, I don't make the football rules. We cut backstage to MVP and Lashley and they're talking about Apollo Crews and trying to recruit him to their stable and talking about how he should join them and how if he doesn't join them then it's just a matter of time before he loses that United States Championship and I really enjoy MVP's role here. He's done a fantastic job in all of his promo work and all of his interviews. He really is a gem on this show. Like he's one of the better parts of the show no doubt and he makes Bobby Lashley 100% more tolerable on Monday Night Raw. We cut backstage and we see Liv Morgan walking around and then out of nowhere, here comes a green haired Ruby Riot. Her long hair flying in the wind, looking pretty good there. Haven't seen her on TV in forever. She comes out and she's trying to talk to Liv Morgan, but Liv Morgan is having none of it. She just storms off and Ruby really doesn't even get to speak to her. She's trying to get her attention, but uh, she has none of it. She just walks off. So maybe we'll have a tag team forming here in these two. I'd love to see, you know, a new team form and maybe it can give Liv Morgan some traction, some much needed traction because she is just, uh, you know, she returns, she had a lot of momentum, and then they just buried the shit out of her here, and she has lost a lot of matches in a row now, so bless Liv Morgan's heart, and I would like to see these two form a tag team, even though the women's tag team division is not very good. It's time for the MVP lounge. We got MVP and Apollo Crews down in the ring talking back and forth. They're talking about recruitment, and Apollo Crews basically saying, I don't want to join you. You know, I can do this. I want to be a fighting champion. MVP saying, you know, you don't have to put the championship on the line all the time and have all these matches, and, you know, there, it looks like they're going to have a feud over the title. They talk about MVP possibly coming for the championship. About that time, out comes one of my favorites to watch growing up, none other than Shelton Benjamin. The same match that we got last week. We're running it back, Brad. I do believe this was a non-title match between Apollo Crews and Shelton Benjamin, but Shelton attacks Crews from behind, and we have a matchup take place. Another match of nothing between the two. I would really like to see a quality match between these guys, but that was not happening tonight. It was garbage. It was not a good match. They didn't do much of anything. It really sucks because I know both these men can go. They're super athletic. They're super good in the ring. Great tech Technicians. I'd love to see these guys go, but they do not do that. Apollo Crews does win the matchup, and MVP tries to raise his hand after the match. Crews is like, no, get the hell out of here, bro. Don't touch me. About that time, Bobby Trashley comes out, and they attack Apollo Crews. So they beat down Apollo Crews, and that was pretty much the end of this segment. So it looks like we may have a Bobby Lashley or MVP championship match coming for Apollo Crews for the U.S. title come Extreme Rules. So it's time for our main event. Show ends with Rey Mysterio coming out, and he's got Dom with him, and he tells Dom that he's scared with his actions last week, and he says he's proud of Dom, but he's angry with him because he put himself at risk, leaving their house, trying to go to Monday Night Raw to confront Seth Rollins and his goons and protect the name of his father and get revenge in the name of Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio pretty much says he's got to fight Seth himself, but Dom says, hell nah, bro. We're de You're my father. We're going to do this together. It's time for a family ass kicking. Out comes the Monday Night Messiah, Seth
Seth Rollins. And you guys already know that he was not alone. Here comes Buddy Murphy. Here comes Austin Theory. We don't have an Austin Theory yet. We'll eventually get one. So all of them are about to attack Ray and Dom. It's three on two. But out of nowhere, this made no sense to me, to be honest with you. But here comes Alistair Black and Humberto Carrillo. So Humberto Carrillo and Alistair Black come to save the day. And they're all fighting. There was a lot of uh, passion and intensity in this segment. I did like that about this segment. I was like, oh, snap, bro. It seemed like everybody was yelling. And, you know, all everybody teams up on Seth Rollins. It's like four on one trying to get Seth Rollins and push his eye onto the steel steps. So they're making their way over to the steel steps to do that to Rollins. But his goons save him. Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory do save Rollins. And they're all brawling again. So then they get Dom. And Seth Rollins is trying to put Dom's eye on the steel steps like they did to Rey Mysterio. But then Aleister Black and Humberto Carrillo cut him off with steel chairs. And we end in a big old brawl. And everything clears out with both teams trying to kill one another, basically. Again, a lot of passion in this segment. I did like that about the segment. But I am not invested in this feud because I don't like Aleister Black and Humberto Carrillo just being thrown in here because they're baby faces. You know, they come to the rescue because they're baby faces. I'm sure as hell we're going to get a six-man tag or something like that take place here or possibly even Extreme Rules. I just want a Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins one-on-one -on -one football match. Is that so damn hard to see? I know we got to get there, but I don't think you need Aleister Black and Humberto Carrillo thrown into this feud. You could have done something different. I low-key thought Dom was going to turn on Rey for a second. I thought that'd be intriguing television, but I'm just, I, I'm not big on just teams getting thrown together randomly for no reason when they're not going to last or they have no pass together, if you get what I'm saying. But overall, the show was meh to me. I, I honestly, I don't think it was as bad as last week, but it might have been because the opening and closing of the show last week was good, but the Edge promo in this was good. The, the Raw Tag Team Championship match was good. I'm just not invested in a lot of stuff. I think that there's good individual talents and things that take place on the show, like good promos and some good matches here and there, but as far as investment level in everything going on or storylines and stuff like that, it's just not there. Like, there are individual efforts and promos matches that take place that I'm like, damn, that was good. Good job for them. But as far as overall, the TV show itself is just not good. It's not good overall. And you can say, like, yeah, we had one or two good things, but on a three-hour show, one or two good things does not make a good show. You know what I'm saying? And I want to give you guys my real authentic self. I'm not going to get up here and I'm not going to praise a show that I don't think necessarily needs to be praised. When it's good, I'm going to tell you it's good. And when it's not good, I'm going to give you my opinions on why I think it's not good. But overall, this show is meh. Good things here and there, but overall, just just still not, not the best. But anyways, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. I think this review went way longer than I expected it to, but you know what, Brad? We can't always have what we like. But anyways, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. I hope you guys did enjoy. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Again, we need more Twitter following. We gotta get the engagements up on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter. Make an account at MyDamnToys. Follow up with me. Watch along with me on Monday Night Raw as we review the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.